Hello everyone, today I will talk to you about bones of flower limb. So, uh, I will start first with the anatomy of pony pelvis. So when you say pony pelvis, that means you are describing four bones. So you have the hip bones, on the one on the right and one on the left as you see, and they are representing the uh, uh, lateral and anterior walls on each side of course and we have the sacrum which is like inverted triangle and another small triangle which is the coccyx so these four bones uh, form uh, the pony pelvis so just we are uh, just uh, given an introduction we will uh, describe each bone as i mentioned in details so let us start just introduction to the uh, hip bone so this bone at all is the hip bone and it's composed as you see from different three colors that means three parts although that's uh, you know uh, uh, after birth they are fused with cartilage, but uh, these three parts will ossify by age of 16 and 18. However, uh, so as you see, the hip bone is composed from or formed of three parts: the ilium, ischium, and pubis. Just follow the colors. So these three bones joined together at the acetabulum we will talk about the acetabulum but just to know that this uh, 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 socket which that receives the uh, head of the femur to form the hip joint so what else we have here I would guys uh, iterate what I mentioned earlier that the uh, uh, two hip bones they are meet anteriorly this is the right and this is the left so they are meet anteriorly at the symphysis pubis they form the symphysis a pubis which is very important joint we'll talk about it and posteriorly the hip bone guys articulates with this triangle bone the sacrum right on the uh, right and also in the left to form yes this is the ilium so this is the sacrum so these joints guys um, uh, are the sacroiliac joint sacroiliac joint from the name of the two articulating bones so Again, look to the three bones, the ilium, ischium, and the pubis that they meet at the acetabulum, but just inferior to the acetabulum. I'm just giving you a lot, just hint for now, just introduction. So just inferior to the acetabulum, we have an opening. This is foramen or opening called obturator foramen. Obturator foramen. However, uh, 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 away from obturator foramen which is the largest foramen in our body but this is a silly thing I don't like to mention it. but um, here guys the anterior border of the hip bone and this is the posterior one and if you look to the posterior um, uh, margin of the bone you will notice two knots one is large and one is small separated by a small spine protruded bone from the ischium so this part of the bone is part from the ischium so it's called ischial spine so the ischial uh, so the presence of ischial spine creates a kind of two knots greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch and there are a couple of structures passes from there now guys let us shift to the ilium so this is the ilium as you see you are looking to the lateral surface of the uh, uh, right hip bone anyway look at the ilium which is like a fan shape in which we can divide it roughly into two parts 
this is the ala part which is the um, uh, which is like the wing of the fan and this is the body and of course the body represents the handle of that uh, fan so the idiom divided into ala part the the the, the, the upper flattened part and the uh, body now of course, as I mentioned, you look into the lateral surface uh, of the uh, idiom here, and you can define a couple of structures, features, I would say. So, this is important landmark, which is the highest pawn in your uh, uh, in the hip pawn, which is the iliac crest. This part of the idiom is the highest point and known as iliac crest. You can feel it. You can put your hand on it on both sides right and it's important landmark as I mentioned just uh, anterior uh, uh, to the uh, uh, iliac crest about you know I would say um, four centimeters or or less you can find like a, a, a protrusion here which is the tuberculum of the iliac crest so the iliac crest at the end of the uh, anterior half of it is the what's going on I don't know so, okay okay it's working now so anteriorly the iliac crest you know it creates a kind of uh, uh, protrusion that the projects laterally known as supericulum of iliac crest <coughs> this is at the anterior end of the iliac crest again remember iliac crest so it's part of iliac crest but anteriorly laterally tuberculum not a tuberosity tuberculum of iliac crest furthermore uh, uh, you can see that the idiom has a kind of small protruded uh, projected bones known as spines because these spines for example they are um, a part of iliac bones so we call them iliac spine we have four Two anterior, this is one, and this is another one, and two posterior, this is one, and this is the other one. Back to the anterior, or even to the posterior as well. So you can see that there is one spine, one iliac spine is superior, and one is inferior, and similarly to the posterior ones. So this one, we'll call it Iliac spine, yes, iliac spine, but this is the anterior or posterior, no, it's anterior. It's superior or inferior, no, it's superior. So this is anterior, superior iliac spine. And this is also anterior, but what? It's inferior, anterior, inferior iliac spine. The anterior superior iliac spine, I think we mentioned that uh, in the uh, GI system. We, I think you remember, guys, when we talked about uh, uh, the uh, uh, the important of this land uh, uh, mark, uh, in which inguinal ligament attached to it and to the pubic uh, tubercle. So, can you feel the anterior superior iliac spine? Yes, we can feel it. You can just put your hand on the iliac crest and just move a little bit anteriorly until you feel that yes, there is an edge and you you you, you move to an, a sharp decline, a sharp decline here. So this point, the sharp point, you will find a protruded bone which is the anterior superior spine, which is very important. You have to know where is that. Okay, posteriorly, you have the posterior superior iliac spine and similarly posterior but what inferior iliac spine okay what else yes when you are looking to the lateral surface of the ilium you can find like a face wide face here which is the uh, it's known as gluteal gluteal surface gluteal surface this comes from the uh, gluteal muscles. You have gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus. So those muscles attached to this area of the bone, 
melee. So let me erase these things. So this gluteal surface uh, has a couple of, I would say, three lines. These lines, uh, the area between lines. Uh, are the um, the areas between lines are the location for attachments of those uh, mentioned muscles and other muscles as well. But anyway, for now, this is the uh, uh, gluteal surface. Let me show you here the uh, gluteal surface and lines. You have three, as I mentioned. You have the longest one, which is the anterior gluteal line. And you have, if this is anterior, this is the posterior gluteal line. So anterior and posterior, also we have one inferior to them, which is the inferior gluteal line. So between, so the gluteal surface divided by three lines, as you see here, and these areas are locations for attachment of muscles. For example, this is the uh, let me give you just a brief, uh, uh, let me just uh, talk briefly about these lines, then we'll uh, talk about the uh, an example for muscle attachments. So the inferior gluteal line, which is very easy to remember, because it starts from the uh, area between the anterior superior spine and posterior spine from this area, from this notch, and ends in the greater sciatic notch in the middle of it and it's inferiorly, just above the acetabulum, right? Now, the anterior gluteal line started behind the anterior superior, uh, anterior superior spine here and moves up legally until it reaches again the uh, greater sciatic notch. The posterior gluteal line, which is sh the shorter one, which is uh, just four centimeters behind the iliac crest, if this is the iliac crest, so four centimeters behind it, it starts from here and moved obliquely down until it reaches the uh, the superior part of a gluteal um, a greater sciatic notch. So, one thing you notice that all lines, regardless from where they started, they end at the greater sciatic notch. So, for example, the area between the inferior gluteal line and anterior one is the location for attachment of gluteus minimus. On the other hand, for example, the area here between the anterior and posterior gluteal line is the location of attachment of gluteus medius. And here is the attachment of gluteus maximus. So, it is about the lateral uh, surface of ilia. But it's interesting also to have a look to the medial surface of the ilia. This is the medial surface. You are looking to the medial surface of the um, uh, right hip bone. And I would say also here we talk about the ilium. So I want to focus on the medial surface of the ilium, the features that can be seen here. This is medial surface, I mean from the inside of the pelvis. Okay. So what can you see? Let me erase this. Okay. First of all, look at it here. There is an articular surface which, which is like L shape. This is the articular surface. Uh, for sacrum. You know that the sacrum will um, articulate with the hip bone, if you remember from the uh, previous uh, slides. So here is the attachment or articulation of the sacrum with the ilium. So this surface is the articular surface for what? For sacrum, it's on the ilia, uh, it's on the ilium, yes, but it's for sacrum, for articulation of sacrum. Just posterior superior to it, there is a small rough area here uh, protruded, which is not clear in the figure here, but it's a protruded uh, 
here guys included this area of course which is for known as iliac tuberosity not tuberculum of iliac crest no tuberculum of iliac crest on the lateral side but here is guys this protruded area which is the iliac uh, tuberosity iliac tuberosity is an area for attachment um, of the um, uh, posterior sacroiliac ligament we will talk about it posterior yes because not anterior posterior sacroiliac yes there is a joint here that formed by the sacrum you know the sacrum articulates here so the joint between sacrum and ilium is the sacroiliac joint here so and it's uh, enhanced by ligaments from different locations including posteriorly so this is the location of attachment of the posterior sacroiliac ligament the same name but posterior because we have anterior so this is the iliac tuberosity anyway i would like just to make sure that you know where is the iliac tuberosity but don't be confused with the posterior superior iliac spine so uh, this is the articular surface, iliac tuberosity, and media, because we look into the medial surface of the ilium, here you can see the iliac fossa. Not gluteal surface, gluteal surface laterally, but medially you will find like a fossa here, which is the iliac fossa, it's in the ilium bone. So, which is also for the location of attachment of iliacus muscle. There is a muscle here, originates from here. So, this is the location of the iliacus, origin of iliacus muscle. Anyway, back again uh, to the, yes, this is the articular surface. But if you continue anteriorly and inferiorly from the articular surface of the sacrum, you will find that there is an oblique protruded line, ridge bone, which is on the ilium. Still, we are. This is the border of the ilium, right? This is the border of the ilium. So this line in the ilium. So we call it arcuate line. This is the arcuate line, which is part of the pelvic prim the border that define the false pelvis from true pelvis this is will be covered in mainly i think or extensively in the urogenital system but you have to know that the pelvic cavity can be divided into two parts upper part and lower part upper part is the false pelvic cavity or greater pelvic cavity which is they consider it why it's false because it's part from abdominal cavity but the lower part of the pelvic cavity, what we call it true pelvic cavity or lesser pelvic cavity, is the true pelvic cavity that contains reproductive organs like, uh, for example, uterus, urinary bladder, ovaries, and so forth. So the border between or the area or the line that determines the border between true and false pelvis is the you call it pelvic prim an imaginary line from sacral promontory here we'll talk about it and extended by uh, anteriorly through the arcuate line stop here now the name of the line the arcuate line will be changed into bictinal line now why because now this line also the same line but it's part from pubic uh, uh, pubic bone or the pubis so we call it picked in a line anyway so at the least now you know that there is uh, uh, an ex uh, protruded line known as arcuate line which is part of uh, ilium okay what else now let us shift to the second part of the hip bone um, uh, that known as ischium this is the ischium this is the ischium interestingly guys it has a body this is the body of the ischium right and 
we mentioned earlier that there is a very interesting uh, landmark known as uh, ischial spine, a small spine protruded from the ischium known as ischial spine, in which it divides the uh, or creates a kind or divide, you can say, not actually divide, but the presence of it, it creates a kind of in the posterior margin of the hip bone, greater sciatic notch and lesser sciatic notch. So this is the scale spine. Okay, we finish it. Now, also there is important landmark and the most or the rest of your life you're sitting on this part, which is the scale tuberosity. Yes, it's part of a scale bone. So it's called scale tuberosity. You can feel it. This is the location where you sit on the, um, uh, where you sit on. And it's the attachment for lower limb muscle, not just you sit on it, no, but also there is a this is a location for attachment of the muscles of the lower limb. Okay, what we have other than the body ischial spine, which is I like it, ischial tuberosity, interesting landmark. Also, it has a small inferior extended part, which is the ramus of ischium. Ramus that means something extended. Ramus of what? Of ischium. That articulates with another ramus. This one, which is part of uh, 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 pubis or pubic bone, right? We'll talk about it. But this part is the ramus of ischium. Okay, now we finished the um, Ilium, we finished the ischium. What else? We have very important bone, which is the pubis. This is the pubis. It has also pretty easy, interesting landmarks. Let me show you what, uh, where these and what they, what those uh, landmarks are. I will start with the. Of course, the body. Where is the body? Yes, this is the center or the body of the pubis. Of course, we are talking about this part, most anteriorly. Now, from the um, from the body, there is uh, 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 two protrusions. One nearby the midline, which is the pubic crest. This part is the crest, and the crest extended laterally to form pro more larger protruded parts, which is the, not pubic crest, no, pubic tubercle, which is important landmark, inguinal, inguinal ligament attached to it, right? So, and you can feel it. Let me show you what I mean. Yes, here is the pubic bone, guys. And most medially, most medially, there is a pubic crest, extension of the body, and laterally this pubic crest expanded to form pubic tubercle, right? More laterally. Okay. So let me embrace these things and go back. Okay. So, yes. Um, sorry, where are we? Okay, so so again, this is the body, pubic crest, and pubic tubercle, and from the body also you have two extensions. One, uh, you two rami, I mean, superior ramus and inferior ramus, and you remember that the inferior ramus. Of the pubis now, articulate. I mentioned that the ramus of ischium articulates with ramus of one ramus of pubic bone, which is the um, inferior pubic ramus. So here is the inferior pubic ramus, and this is the superior pubic ramus. Now, on the superior pubic ramus, as I mentioned, there is a protruded ridge line, which is a continuation of that of the ilium, that known as arcuate line. But once it passes here to the pubis, we call it pectinal line, right? Pectinal line. K 
keep you keep it keep this line in your mind please so the bictin line and the arcuate line back to the promontory of sacrum create a pelvic prim something called pelvic pelvic prim which is the line that uh, uh, shows you uh, where is the uh, uh, the border between the um, true pelvis and false uh, pelvis now interestingly here if you uh, look to the superior ramus this is a superior ramus yes there is an area here which is uh, located here deep to the uh, superior ramus known as obturator groove yes this is the obturator foramen but this is obturator groove this groove it creates a kind of the roof of a small canal known as obturator canal what do you mean by obturator okay let me show you here's guys the Obturator foramen. This foramen will be closed by a membrane, obturator membrane, right? Except this is small area through which obturator vessels and nerve passes from the pelvis to the medial side of the uh, thigh. So there's a connection, one point of connection between the pelvic cavity and the uh, middle side of the thigh so through this canal this is obturator canal creates canal close is because everything is closed by membrane and this is of course there is a tender pass from here but still has a story uh, so this is obturator canal pass through obturator nerve and vessels so this area of the bone called obturator groove that creates a kind of the roof of this obturator canal so it's related to the uh, severe pubic, uh, pubic ramus. So yes, we mentioned that. We mentioned that the body has a protruded bone anteriorly, which is the um, pubic crest nearby the midline. And this pubic crest extended laterally to form more protruded bone, which is the pubic tubercle. Okay, we mentioned the uh, from the pubic tubercle from pubic tubercle, this ridge line known as the pectinal line. This is the pectinal line. So it's uh, it's good to mention that this is the obturator foramen. Again, I don't like to mention that this is the larger foramen in the skeleton. I hear it, but anyway, it's formed by the uh, uh, pubis and the ischium. Look at it here also obturator foramen formed by the ischium and pubis nothing to do with the ilium um, it has shifted the sacrum although I think um, the sacrum covered with uh, with uh, vertebral column but it's good to talk briefly about the sacrum you know uh, that the hip bone uh, uh, either on the right or on the left you know articulate both of them articulate with the sacrum medially and we mentioned earlier that the sacrum it's like an inverted triangle you see that and laterally it the sacrum articulates with the right and left uh, I would say right and left uh, hip uh, pawns to form the sacroiliac joint now what else that's laterally but what about uh, 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 the articulation of the sacrum superiorly well pretty easy it articulates with the last lumbar vertebra which is L5 vertebra number L uh, number five the number vertebral number five l5 so this is superiorly or above what about inferiorly simply it articulates with a uh, 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 coccyx which is uh, uh, four fused 
uh, bones. This is about the articulation of the sacrum laterally, superiorly, and inferiorly. Now, let us talk briefly about different structures there. You know, the sacrum is composed from five sacral uh, vertebrae number one two three four and five and most interestingly the s1 the sacral vertebra number one in which the superior edge of the body of it has protruded anteriorly and this is a protrusion known as sacral promontory sacral promontory it's very important why because it used for the measurement of pelvic diameter i will show you what does it mean so you have you can feel it of course with your middle finger in uh, uh, using the uh, uh, vaginal examination so this is the sacral promontory so Keep in mind that sacral promontory is important and it's a protruded part of the upper part of s1 in the sacral um, uh, uh, vertebra number one and laterally you know the uh, it expanded laterally to form like protrude uh, expanded part known as the ala ala is always me it means the uh, uh, extended part so this is about the s1 and of course you know all the uh, sacral vertebrae if used together and the intervertebral disc between them anteriorly and posteriorly you will see that it disappeared and anteriorly this uh, uh, lift and uh, what we call it um, uh, transverse ridge or lines so these are transverse lines indicate the borders between sacral vertebra and sacral vertebrae anteriorly also posteriorly guys the spinous process is also if used together to form like continuous ridge known as median sacral crest median because it's in the midline that's why median a and not medial so median sacral crest crest that mean protrusion so this you know the uh, the spinous processes yes if used together but look at the end there is a failure of spinous process to fuse creates a kind of a hiatus which is like an arch this is the sacral hiatus what's the significance of sacral hiatus can we um, palpated yes you can palpate it and uh, uh, in anesthesia they use it to deliver something called caudal caudal epidural uh, uh, anesthesia so in order to anesthetize the uh, 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 sacral uh, nerves so it's used uh, as a well-known route for uh, anesthesia and um, what else here yes you can see here is there is a, 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 a sacral horns or sacral cornua cornua because it's a plural we say cornua so these horns directed uh, 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 inferiorly to articulate with similar uh, uh, horns projected up from the coccyx so what else yes we have uh, uh, four pairs of anterior sacral foramina it has uh, uh, before that wait yes so here is the anterior sacral foramina on the right and on the left right and also we have also four pairs posteriorly right for posterior four pairs of posterior sacral foramina in order through which these foramina the anterior ramus and also posterior ramus of sacral nerves um, exit from these foramina respectively that means the sacral um, nerve uh, uh, divides into anterior and posterior rami and the anterior rami exit uh, anterior rami exits the um, through the anterior sacral foramina and posterior rami exits through the posterior 
uh, one. So, what else we have? Why, uh, anyway, why this create is like that? Why we have uh, four pair anterior and four pair posterior? Because this, the transversal process is fused lateral to the um, lateral to the intervertebral uh, uh, foramen. You know, between vertebra and vertebra, there's intervertebral uh, foramen. Uh, but here the transversal process is fused lateral to it, so the spinal nerve will divide, the sacral uh, nerve will divide into posterior and anterior rami before that, and each one um, uh, exits the uh, corresponding, from the corresponding uh, uh, foramen. Okay. So, yes, we know that the sacrum has L-shaped uh, articular uh, facet, for articulation with the uh, hip uh, bone and similar to this fast also on the hip bone as well we mentioned that earlier so um, the sacrum yes inverted triangle but we have another small inverted triangle which is the coccyx as you see for fused bones and the uh, coccyx number one has rudimentary transversal process nothing to do with that and they have also it has also two horns or cornea pair of cornea directed up to articulate with the corresponding sacral cornea uh, superiorly and um, yes there is an joint between the sacrum and uh, coccyx uh, sacro uh, coccygeal joint and it gives a flexibility because it tilted the coccyx I mean tilted backward relatively uh, during the defecation for example and during the child bearing okay I think that's enough this is a surface anatomy which is good uh, uh, to know I would like here to show you uh, uh, in the anterior view, this is very important landmark, anterior superior iliac spine. I told you you can feel it in which the inguinal ligament attached to uh, laterally. Furthermore, look at the symphysis of pubis, the location of symphysis of pubis in the midline, and this is the body of the uh, pubis. This is a, a, a pubic uh, a tubercle here. And posteriorly, look at the uh, natal cleft here. More superiorly is the location of the coccyx. Just superior to it, the sacral hiatus, the location where the anesthesia can be delivered. Uh, I mean sacral epidural anesthesia. So you can feel it. You have to feel it and know where the sacral hiatus because the, uh, uh, the clinically is important. What else? Yes, this is the iliac crest, as I told you here on the right and on the left. Also important landmark. And this is the um, ischial tuberosity where you sit uh, on it. Okay, you can also have a look on this uh, natural bone. That's uh, very interesting. Um, Yes, let me give you uh, 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 a quick view about the acetabulum. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier, but it's good to uh, mention again that the acetabulum is like a socket or a deep uh, fossa, as you see here, formed by three bones, ilium, ischium, pubis. Of course, the pubis formed one-fifth of it, but the uh, two-fifth of it formed by ilium and similarly uh, by uh, ischium. Now, we mentioned also that um, the acetabulum receives the head of the femur to form the hip joint or acetabulofemoral uh, joint. Here, guys, look inferiorly. There's a kind of a notch here. This is in the acetabulum, so it's called acetabular notch, called acetabular notch, which is uh, 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 indeed, uh, uh, when it's closed, it's formed by or closed like this, I mean, it forms like um, uh, a foramen, it becomes the notch, uh, becomes like a foramen for blood vessels and nerve that supply, of course, the uh, joint and the head of the uh, uh, femur. Furthermore, it creates a kind of a location of attachment for the uh, um, 
an important ligament which is related to the head of femur that known as the ligament of the head of the femur okay here okay this is the head of the femur and this is fovea cavis so this ligament the ligament of the head of the femur attached to this area to the acetabular notch okay um, although I would like to leave it for the uh, next uh, semester um, mainly because it's uh, something related to the uh, uh, next system so but it's good to show you here is the uh, sacrum and this is the sacral promontory here which is important and you remember the arcuate line and bictinal line that forms all of these uh, things form the um, uh, pelvic prim above it is the false pelvis or great pelvis which is you know they consider it part of the the lower part of abdominal cavity but the true pelvis or the lesser or smaller one which is the true pelvis this one which is below the pelvic prim and also this is the border of pelvic inlet right because this is the big uh, pelvic outlet so this is a pelvic uh, inlet again here when you look here guys Yes, this is a sacral promontory. That's what I'm focusing on. Arcuate line and bictinal line anteriorly all the way to reach the pubic tubercle. So this is the pelvic inlet or the um, also the border of uh, pelvic prim, sorry, the pelvic prim and the inlet of true um, pelvis. So, uh, um, yes, nothing to say. Well, here, guys, I would like to show you the differences. Also, also, I prefer to refer to the next semester, but just quickly, you look to the pubic arch. This is the an arch or the angle between the uh, pubis bone on the right and if in the left. So it's called the pubic arch. So the angle is less than less than eighty degree. Another authority they said less than ninety. Another authority is less than seventy. So there is a controversy about that. But there is a general consensus that the uh, pubic uh, pubic uh, arch in the male is narrower than that in the female. So in the female it's wider right it's more than say 90 or 80 in the male it's narrower how can we uh, summarize it yes it's i would say it's equal to the angle between your index finger and middle finger but in the female it's equal to the angle between the thumb and index finger because it's wider right so there are other differences i will show you in this table uh, so if you look to the pelvic inlet uh, you will find in the males like heart shape right but in the uh, uh, female uh, it's uh, uh, really uh, rounded and wide the power the pelvic outlet in the male is like narrow but in the female is wide that helps her during the uh, 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 child bearing and delivery I mean so the pelvic cavity in general in the male is like uh, is becomes like narrower once you move from inlet to outlet and um, in the female is like cylindrical shape right the pubic arch we mentioned that in the male it's uh, less than it's narrow and less than 70 or less than 80 and in the female no the pubic arch is wide now i would like here to show you for example here is uh, in the male um, look at the pubic arch narrow look at the obturator uh, obturator foramen which is round but the obturator foramen in the female is like oval shape right it's like oval shape Furthermore, look at the um, uh, pelvic cavity here up in the false pelvic cavity. Um, it's wide. Uh, sorry, in the, in the in the male it's narrow, but in the uh, in the uh, female it's wider, right? And 
in the female you can see that it's yes it's wider but it's shallow right shallow but in the male it's narrower but it's deep deeper than in the female furthermore when you look to the sacrum in the male the sacrum you will uh, find it like uh, uh, longer and narrower and directed forward but in the female it's wider and shorter and directed backward again it helps the female uh, during the child uh, uh, peering so this is about the uh, kind of differences between uh, the pelvis in the male and in the uh, uh, female uh, furthermore I would like to emphasize on one thing here the position the position of the uh, pelvis it's not as you see in uh, most text box you have to know that the uh, uh, in order to summarize it to you you see this front edge of the uh, symphysis or the top of the symphysis uh, pupus here and uh, pubic tubercle yes they are at the same plane at the same vertical plane with anterior superior edx spine look at this plane so the pelvic inlet is tilted anteriorly so look at its position it's not horizontal as you imagine no the anterior superior edx spine should be tilted anteriorly and at the same vertical plane with uh, the uh, say uh, superior part of the symphysis pubis or you can say pubic tubercle and also the body of the um, pubis the superior ramus and the inferior ramus they positioned like nearly in a horizontal plane facing the ground not anteriorly right so this is the correct anatomical position of the pelvis let us uh, shift uh, and move just inferiorly a little bit and you will find the longest bone in your body uh, which is the uh, femur indeed briefly the um, let us start saying that the femur you know articulates above as we mentioned earlier with the acetabulum uh, of the hip bone to form the hip joint and inferiorly it articulates with the tibia and patella as well to form the uh, knee joint now so there is articulation above and below and we can for uh, to make it like easier to study it i would like to uh, divide it into three parts the proximal part the shaft or oh, let's say see this the shaft and the distal part so we have distal part the proximal part and the shaft so let us start with the proximal uh, part of the femur and when you look there you will find oh yes there is a head and there is a neck and there is a couple of structures here um, uh, toward the uh, shaft but here back again to the head look at the head which is uh, as you know when you look to the uh, inferior diagram this is the acetabulum I think you remember that and this is the head of the femur and uh, it's good to note that the uh, uh, um, uh, head of the femur has a kind of non-articular part near the center of it, it that's known as fovea cavities in the fovea cavities there is a, a, a ligament attached to it as you see here which is the ligament of the head of the femur this is the head of the femur yes so there is a ligament known the ligament of the head of the femur attached to the fovea cavities of course with the uh, a branch uh, from obturator artery known as acetabular branch to supply the head of the uh, femur pass uh, there uh, along with the uh, this ligament or the ligament of the head of the femur so what else in your body if you look to yourself you have a head and 
after the head you have a constricted area known as the neck and similarly to the femur this is the head and this is the constricted area which is that known as the neck look at the angle between um, the uh, 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 head and the shaft here this angle approximately I would say about 125 degree that uh, you know that's the neck if you look at here was connected to the um, acetabulum it's uh, 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 projected superior medially superior medially and slightly a little bit anteriorly or to the forward now also what we have what we can see in the proximal part of the uh, femur yes you can see very clearly the uh, uh, two projected uh, bones the greater trochanter and another smaller uh, uh, project bone medially which is the uh, uh, lesser trochanter so you have greater trochanter and lesser trochanter these two projected bones for muscle attachment we'll talk a little bit about it and look at it we are looking to the uh, this is an anterior view of the proximal part of the femur not posterior view so anteriorly the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter connected um, uh, between each other by a kind of a line of a bone known as intertrochantric line because between two trochanters right so anteriorly it's a line right intertrochantric line which is uh, uh, also what's the importance of this ridge this is for attachment mainly say uh, for the uh, iliofemoral uh, iliofemoral um, ligament which is we will talk about it when we um, cover the hip uh, cover the hip joint iliofemoral ligament between the ilium and femur of course okay now let us follow the um, uh, uh, intertrochantric line when you follow the intertrochantric line that connects between the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter you will find that it twisted posteriorly let us follow it posteriorly and have a look to the posterior view right so again this is lesser trochanter but you're looking to the proximal part of the femur posteriorly so so this is the, um, the intertrochantric line that continues posteriorly as pectineal line pectineal line which is this line or ridge for attachment of pectineous muscle right sometimes they call it a spiral line because it's like a spiral shape right so but it's a continuation of intertrochantric line anteriorly once moved and twisted posteriorly now it becomes a baked in a line or, and or you call it spiral line and as uh, as I mentioned once you uh, continue with the baked in a uh, line you will find yourself merged with the linear uh, aspira so um, we have to uh, uh, mention that the uh, greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter connected posteriorly not anteriorly because anteriorly we covered that here but posteriorly they connect, uh, connected by intertrochantric crest not line a crest now in the upper half of this crest you will find a small protruded area known as quadrated tubercle this posteriorly quadrated tubercle uh, in the upper half of intertrochantric crest is for attachment of quadratus femoris muscle quadratus femoris um, uh, muscle now what else yes greater trochanter here if i would erase um, erase everything here so uh, this is again greater uh, the, the greater trochanter it continues posteriorly and when you go posteriorly here you will find there is a groove here this um, uh, a groove known as a truck or fossa known as a trochantric fossa this is the trochantric fossa here is the trochantric uh, fossa this fossa guys for the attachment of the tendon of obturator uh, uh, external 
muscle obturator externus muscle okay now let us shift to the uh, shaft of the femur any extended part it's called shaft so when you take a cross section from the femur the shaft of the femur you will find it has three surfaces and three border anteriorly here you'll find this is the anterior surface this is the lateral and this is the medial surface pretty easy and the margin which is the sharp area in between there is a medial margin lateral margin and posterior margin most importantly is the posterior margin look at it here you are looking to the posterior view of the shaft of the femur this is the post this is the linea aspera linea aspera formed the posterior border look it's like protruded to the back right this is the linea aspera or the posterior uh, uh, border of the shaft of the femur now the linea aspera this one let me erase it to show you it again yes this is a protruded bone posteriorly it continues inferiorly and superiorly let us follow it superiorly once you reach the proximal end of the femur it divides or diverge into bictinal line as you see here the location of attachment we said that the bictinal line we mentioned that earlier or spiral line attachment of pectineous muscle and also the lateral uh, protruded bone or tuberosity is the gluteal tuberosity you see here so it has le medial and lateral part this gluteal tuberosity as I mentioned it's for attachment of gluteus maximus muscle gluteus maximus muscle okay now again to the linea aspira this is linea aspira posteriorly when you uh, continues downward again it diverges into a uh, lateral and this is the lateral and this is the medial supracondylar ridge or lines supracondylar ridge or lines so why because this is a condyle and this is a condyle so this is a supra because it's above the condyle supracondylar lines one medi one laterally and one medially always the head is medially so this is medial supracondylar line now the medial supracondylar line once you continue with it near the uh, 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 medial condyle it ends by a small tubercle here called the adductor tubercle which form attachment of adductor muscles this is adductor tubercle medially right and uh, uh, what about the um, uh, let us now shift uh, again this is the lateral supracondyle I think that much to say about it that ends um, laterally with the lateral condyle now between these ridges the medial and lateral area there is a triangular space this triangular area you see here guys is the uh, uh, floor of popliteal fossa we will talk about the popliteal fossa and the contents of the of this fossa later after a couple of lectures right but this is the floor of the popliteal uh, fossa now the um, distal end of the femur or the lower end of the femur you look into the femur here laterally here you are looking to it anteriorly right and again here is posteriorly so we um, it's good to, again to go back to the um, uh, anterior view look at the medial uh, condyle which is larger than the lateral uh, condyle and in between there is uh, uh, they are the medial and lateral condyles and here guys these condyles the lateral and medial condyles 
are separated anteriorly by a um, facet or a surface for articulation of the patella. You know, the patella is located here. So this facet or this surface is the patellar surface or articular patellar uh, uh, surface. But posteriorly, the medial condyle and the lateral condyle um, are separated by fossa or notch known as intercondylar fossa. Why it's inter? Because it's in between, between the condyles, right? Between lateral and medial condyle, posteriorly. There is intercondylar fossa. That means you will find the fossa just posteriorly, but anteriorly, no. You will find like uh, the patellar surface, articular patellar surface for articulation with the uh, patella, because you know that the femur articulates with the uh, patella. Now, um, it's important to say what, what I'm gonna say now is something is important, but I know maybe. Um, you're gonna feel it like early because we will talk about that in details when we talk about the knee joint but again look at the medial condyle for example here so the medial surface of the 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 the, the um, sorry the lateral surface of medial condyle because this is medially and this is laterally and this is the medial condyle so the lateral surface of medial condyle uh, 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 bears the attachment of posterior crochet ligament. In the knee joint, you have anterior crochet and posterior crochet ligaments. Okay, so the lateral surface of medial condyle here, you see this spot? This is the attachment for the posterior crochet ligament. On the other hand, this is the lateral condyle, yes. So the medial surface of lateral condyle bears the attachment for anterior crochet ligament. Okay. Now, yes, we mentioned that the femur articulates with the patella. The patella is, uh, we consider it as a sesamoid bone, as you see here, which is like, um, again, a diamond shape or triangular uh, shape that's located inside the quadriceps femoris tendon. This is the quadriceps femoris uh, tendon, so the patella located inside it. So the superior, medial, lateral, and uh, medial surface of the or border of the uh, patella or margin of the pa of the patella. Uh, attached to the quadriceps femoris tendon, while the inferior or the apex of the patella inferiorly uh, uh, attached to the or uh, attached yes to the um, patellar ligament, this ligament here, and to the tibial tuberosity inferiorly. So again. Again, this is the patella in which above medially and laterally attached to quadriceps um, femoris tendon, while its apex here attached to patellar ligament that, that attaches it to the TPL tuberosity. Is a protruded bone you can feel it by your finger also the patella you can uh, feel it you can catch it and you can move it when your um, uh, knee is extended right not flexed when it is extended yes you can move it right and left above and below so and uh, what else to say here yes anteriorly as uh, I mentioned it's um, subcutaneous the patella, but posteriorly it articulates uh, with the articular surface of patella on the femur, right? Now, let us shift uh, just our move inferiorly to cover the bones of the leg. You have two bones now, one medial, 
which is the tibia and one is lateral which is the fibula and also we can divide it into proximal part shaft and distal part or end so once you look to the proximal part of the uh, tibia you will find that it has two condyles this is the lateral condyle and this is the medial condyle in which the medial condyle articulates with the medial uh, condyle of the femur and similarly the lateral condyle here articulates with the lateral condyle of the femur above so nothing is new but again the medial condyle if you look posteriorly here you will find it this is posterior if right here is anterior view posteriorly it has a little like, groove here posteriorly on the medial I'm talking about the medial condyle which is for attachment of semimembranosus muscle we'll talk about it now this is the lateral uh, uh, condyle in which which it has a facet here it's not clear here let me show it here laterally um, this facet for articulation of the head of fibula so this is articular cells for proximal head of fibula for articulation of the head of fibula laterally on the lateral uh, condyle in which it forms like a joint known as proximal because we have distal one proximal tibio fibular joint and let us have a look to the superior surface of the uh, proximal part of tibia look there is a kind of two um, tubercles you can see here these between the two condyles and they are protruded above it's like eminence so these are tubercles of intercondylar uh, eminence so they these are the intercondylar eminences those for attachment of course uh, with the uh, give attachment for meniscus here we'll talk about it when we cover the knee joint so shifting to the shaft and most prominent structure you can palpate it just um, flex your uh, knee and um, below the patella you will feel this protruded part which is the tibial tuberosity all of us can feel it and even the skin here is rough and sometimes a little bit dark so this is the tibial uh, tuberosity the upper part is smooth and the lower part of attachment for the patellar um, ligament if you uh, remember we said that this is very important again uh, i can remind you guys where is that okay here is the patellar ligament attached to the apex of the patella and to the um, tpl tuberosity here so this is the patellar ligament don't confuse this is patellar ligament and this is quadriceps femoris tendon for the huge muscle here anyway so um yes taking a uh, cross section through the patella you will find it also has three borders and three surfaces this is the um, tibia and this is the fibula and when you look to the tibia three borders there is anterior border you can you don't have to forget it just feel the tibia of your leg you will find that there is a sharp border anteriorly sharp border not covered by anything just subcutaneous covered just by skin a little bit of fat so just feel it there is anterior border in your tibia so you will not forget that you have anterior border and you have interosseous border for attachment uh, for, uh, to articulate with the um, fibula laterally so this is interosseous membrane and that means this interosseous border and you have medial border here surfaces you have lateral medial and posterior simply lateral medial and posterior the um, 
posterior surface, you know, look to the posterior surface of the shaft of the tibia, you will find a very interesting line. It's the soleus line moved from lateral to medial. Soleus or soleal line. With the soleal line for attachment of soleus muscle, right? For attachment of soleus uh, muscle. Now, let us move now to the distal end of the um, tibia. Look at it here. The lower end of the tibia articulates with the talus. This is the kind of attach with the talus. So it has a facet for articulation with the talus to form what's known as ankle joint. Of course, the distal end has a prominent bone, very important, very important landmark is the which is that known as medial malleolus medial malleolus can you feel it oh yes it's very prominent you can feel it please feel it on your in the medial side of the ankle joint it's a prominent and is very important fixed landmark this is a protruded part is the medial malleolus okay now the medial malleolus you can feel it because here medially is subcutaneous just covered by skin but laterally it articulates with the talus right what else we have on the distal end of the tibia yes we mentioned we have um, medial malleolus we have articular cells for talus but we know that the tibia laterally articulates superiorly with the head of uh, fibula and inferiorly as well, creating a kind of proximal and distal tibiofibular um, joint. So that means I am expected to find on the tibia an articular surface again, uh, articular surface for fibula, articular surface for the uh, fibula for articulation of the fibula to form the uh, we, we call it fibular notch on tibia fibular notch or fibular groove here you see the shadow yes this is the fibular notch or uh, groove uh, on tibia for articulation of the fibula okay now um, i would uh, say this uh, lastly that if you look to the tibia you will find that the upper end of the tibia larger than the lower end of it so this is the upper end and this is the lower end and the medial malleolus directed downward and medially and we can touch it and feel it and it's important landmark and the medial malleolus is part of tibia but lateral malleolus part of fibula we'll talk about it and as I mentioned, which is something you cannot and you have not to forget that you have anterior sharp border here. You can feel it as well. Okay. Now, the fibula, just briefly about the fibula, it's like cylindrical lateral bone of your leg, but it has nothing to do with the weight peering. The weight peering is the responsibility of tibia, not fibula. Anyway, the fibula you see here, the cylindrical, cylindrical uh, uh, bone, the lateral bone of your leg has a head, and the head also has an apex here. However, the um, uh, head articulates with the tibia laterally and of course it's connected to the uh, tibia by interosseous membrane that means that we will have interosseous border right so again three surfaces three borders i will start with the uh, border again you have anterior border 
similar to the anterior border of tibia you will not forget it and also it has interosseous border similar to the interosseous border of tibia but in the tibia you have medial border in the uh, fibula you have posterior border right but that's okay easy to remember but what about the surfaces there is an easy way to remember the surfaces guys in which the uh, if you know and you will know when talk about the leg later on your leg has three compartments we divide it to three compartments lateral medial posterior compartment of your leg right so um, similarly the surfaces of um, fibula similar to the uh, or the fibula have the the, the fibula sorry has uh, three surfaces facing each one face each one faces the corresponding compartment of the leg. That means it has lateral surface, it has medial uh, surface, and it has uh, what known as posterior uh, uh, surface. And lastly. The distal end of the fibula has a couple of structures. Let me summarize it to you. Firstly, and most importantly, is the lateral malleolus. This is the lateral malleolus of the fibula. You can feel it, you can touch it, and when you sit, um, uh, when you sit on the ground, usually the lateral malleolus against the ground. Also, it has a tough or rough skin, dark skin as well. So it's important landmark as well. So remember, lateral malleolus part from fibula, but medial malleolus part from tibia. Anyway, back to the fibula. It's subcutaneous. The lateral malleolus is subcutaneous. That's why you can feel it. And sometimes when you sit in it for a long time, it becomes like painful. So um, it forms uh, it articulates again with the talus because the talus here articulates with the tibia and with fibula to form the ankle joint. Furthermore, let me show you here again. Look at this um, articular surface for talus on the fibula. I'm talking about fibula this bone so just posterior inferior you looking you looking now to the posterior surface of the tibia and fibula distally huh? so this is the articular surface for talus and posterior inferiorly there is a kind of fossa here known as malleolar fossa malleolar fossa because in the lateral malleola so malleolar fossa uh, which is important for uh, talofibular ligament the talus is here so there is a talofibular ligament and also in the malleolus here lateral malleolus posterior there is a groove here um, which is uh, uh, this groove for the tendon of um, uh, uh, fibularis longus and the previous here is a clear let me show you Yes, this one, this groove, this groove on the lateral malleolus posteriorly for the fibularis longus and the brevis muscle. There is tendons moving here. So remember that. Let us shift to uh, talk about the bones of foot. So let me start with a brief introduction and uh, give you a general overview of the uh, bones that form the uh, the foot. First of all, you have a group of bone with seven bones known as tarsal bones. So these are the uh, tarsal bones. They are seven in number. And if this is tarsal bone, this is metatarsal. I would just remind you before jumping to the metatarsal, you remember that um, carpal bones in the hand are eight, but here we call them not uh, carpal, we call them tarsal. Tarsal bone are seven. 
right? But the same number, metatarsal, metatarsal R5 starting uh, from the most medial one, which is uh, to the uh, uh, related to the uh, grade two. So one, two, three, and uh, so until you reach number uh, five. And phalanges, phalanges guys, we have uh, 14. Each toe has three phalanges, uh, except the great toe, which has two, uh, just has uh, uh, two phalanges. Otherwise, the uh, rest of the uh, toes uh, have three phalanges. One, two, three, and we'll talk more about that. So, uh, yes, uh, we have seven tarsal bones, and by age of five, uh, almost uh, of these uh, uh, bones uh, will ossified, and you can divide them into three groups. So, you have proximal group, which is the talus, and calcaneus, and you have intermediate uh, one which is the navicular bone and you have a distal group which is uh, that includes the three cuneiform bones in addition to cuboid right so this is the distal uh, distal group and this is the proximal group and this is the intermediate we have just one which is the navicular uh, bone. Now, when you look here, guys, to the proximal group, you will see very important bone here, which is the talus. This is the talus, and this is the only um, uh, the only tarsal bone that uh, articulates uh, with tibia and uh, uh, fibula right to form of course the ankle joint now yes um, on the other hand in the proximal groove we have also very important bone which is the uh, calcaneus which is the largest bone and form the heel okay so let us start with the uh, tails yes this is the talus you see here this is lateral view here is a superior view and this is uh, mostly anterior view so this is you cannot see that the talus is the most superior uh, bone in the foot and uh, it articulates inferiorly or it sets superior to the calcaneus you see this is the joint in between we'll talk later about that and um, it articulates the, I mean the talus, articulates superiorly with the tibia and fibula to form the uh, ankle joint. That's superiorly, but most importantly, uh, again, this is the talus, most importantly, you have to remember that the talus articulates anteriorly with the navicular bone, with navicular bone. But... Calcane, uh, the calcaneus articulates anteriorly with the cuboid C with C so don't forget that and this is laterally but talus articulates with navicular and this is medially this is the medial side right this is the lateral side okay so let us dig deep in the talus and when you look uh, uh, when you look at it in general, you can, I think, conclude that, uh, or you can see that it looks like a snail. It looks like a snail. It's a snail shape. And it has head, neck, and body. That's fine. It's like a snail. So, what's the most important features in the head? Yes, we remember that the talus anteriorly articulates with the navicular bone. That means I'm expecting to find a facet here or articular surface here to articulate with the navicular 
bone. So the head has an articular surface for articulation with the navicular bone anteriorly. Let us twist this uh, bone and look from uh, and have an inferior view. So again, yes, still we can see the articular surface anteriorly of navic for navicular bone and also the head has two facets in addition to that for navicular bone because you remember it articulates inferiorly with the calcaneus right this is the talus and this is calcaneus so this is the articular surface for navicular bone so also it has two uh, facets uh, or articular surfaces uh, for articulation with the with the calcaneus so it has anterior and middle calcaneal surface for articulation with calcaneus inferiorly very simple this is the head shift now to the neck this is the neck this is the neck what's the most important feature in the neck is a presence of the sulcus look at this sulcus this is sulcus tali. We call it sulcus tali. It's important. Yes, it's very important because it are the, because the talus articulates superiorly with uh, calcaneus inferior. I mean, the talus superiorly articulates with uh, uh, calcaneus inferiorly. Look at this here. Why I'm gonna talk? Uh, um, look, this is the talus, and look, this is a groove, and there is another groove here created by calcaneus. So there is a canal here, or tunnel, or sinus, for blood vessels and ligaments and nerves. So this is important. So let us understand how this form will simply, we'll talk more about after a couple of slides, but it's formed by a groove or sinus or sulcus created from the talus and another one uh, inferior to it by the calcaneus, so they create a kind of a tunnel called tarsal uh, sinus, uh, or uh, yes, uh, tarsal sinus. We'll talk about that. So, uh, so this is the uh, sulcus tali, sulcus tali, sulcus because sulcus tali because from talus related to the talus bone. Okay, shift to the body what the what are the uh, features can you can be seen in the uh, in the body well simply first of all again this is the uh, <coughs> this is the uh, body because we know that it articulates with the tibia and fibula so you know this is the body the distal end of tibia and this is the medial malleolus of the tibia and this is the lateral malleolus or the location for articulation of lateral malleolus of fibula that means you will get three uh, uh, facets or articular surfaces anyway you can see here just the that one for medial malleolus and that for distal end of tibia we call it trochlea and of course there is another one here lateral to it in the uh, 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 there on the screen the third one for the a lateral malleolus of fibula so what else yes laterally you will get a process lateral process where is that unfortunately you look into the medial side here right it's a medial view so let me show you here where is the lateral process well it's very clear here here is you look laterally right so this is the lateral process of talus Okay, what else? Yes, we have articular surfaces for on the body for tibia fibula and uh, posteriorly uh, you will get the third calcaneal surface. We mentioned that in the head we have anterior and middle calcaneal uh, 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 articular surfaces for calcaneus. Now also we have, not anterior and middle, we have the wrist eye, which is the posterior calcaneal surface that articulates with the calcaneus. Where is that? I think you can see it here. This is the posterior calcaneal surface located here. So if you look also to the body, you will find that there is a posterior process yes posterior process this is the posterior process 
the um, uh, posterior uh, process of tails also divided yes this is the, the whole of this part is the posterior process of talus this is the head this is the neck this is the body and in the body you have posterior process that means protrusion and it has two tubercles lateral tubercle and medial tubercle and look in between there is like a groove this groove for a tendon of flexor halus is longus the flexor that flex your halus is that mean a uh, uh, big toe longus because it's long so uh, again it's very clear here yes um, lateral tubercle medial tubercle and both they form something called posterior process of talus it's not a process, middle process, and this is the groove for flexor halluses. Look, I hope I didn't miss anything. Calcaneus is uh, the largest and the most posterior tarsal bone. If you look here, here is the, uh, this is the calcaneus, which is, as I mentioned, the largest and the um, the largest tarsal bone and the most posterior um, one and as you see here guys it articulates anteriorly articulates anteriorly the calcane the calcaneus articulates with the cuboid c always remember c with uh, c and let us uh, back here so this is articular series for uh, cuboid bone that means anterior I know you're looking to the inferior surface of the um, calcaneus back to the superior view here here is the superior view of the calcaneus so here is anteriorly and here is most posteriorly right so this uh, you will find the facet for uh, or articular surface uh, for cuboid anteriorly so if you look away from anterior, it is move posteriorly. If you have a look to the uh, posterior surface of the heel, yes, again, this is a lateral view. This is anterior, and again, this is uh, posterior. If you uh, look to the posterior surface of the heel, you will find it, or you can divide it into three parts, upper part, middle part, and lower part in the middle part here or to the middle part the strongest um i would say the strongest tendon on your body is the achilles uh, tendon achilles tendon or it's called also calcaneal tendon calcaneal tendon which is related to the calcaneus so the calcaneal tendon of course you can catch it you can see it you can feel it uh, it's in the in the uh, it just uh, above the heel, uh, which is uh, also it's a prone always for injury. We will talk about it later in when we cover the uh, leg. Anyway, so the Achilles tendon or calcaneal tendon attached to the middle part of the posterior surface of the calcaneus. But let us continue now and have a look to the inferior, uh, to inferiorly and. Um, follow yes posterior cells but inferiorly let us look at this well better to see it inferiorly so this is the lower part of the posterior um, uh, uh, surface of the calcaneus that's known as calcaneal tuberosity so this is the calcaneal tuberosity that um, uh, gives uh, two processes medial process and lateral process right and in between there's a kind of a notch here so um, let us uh, uh, again summarize it when you look here uh, laterally to the calcaneus you have the posterior surface of calcaneus can be divided into three parts the upper one the middle and the uh, inferior one so the calcaneal tendon attached to the middle posterior part here now the inferior part of the posterior surface of calcaneus uh, creates a kind of uh, extension or protrusion or enlargement here known as 
calcaneal nail tuberosity. So also it's a prone for uh, injury and usually fractured, right? Because it's against the ground. So this calcaneal tuberosity uh, divided into medial process and lateral process. So um, let us have a look to the inferior surface, or you can call it a plantar surface. Plantar uh, surface. You can see that the uh, plantar surface anteriorly, or the anterior edge of it, uh, um, has a kind of a tubercle, which is the calcaneal tubercle. Not calcaneal tuberosity, calcaneal tubercle. And this tubercle, you know, I think you remember that the cuboid bone uh, articulates here anteriorly with the calcaneus so there is a ligament between uh, cuboid bone and calcaneus this ligament known as plantar because it's inferior plantar calcaneo cuboidal ligament or it's known as short plantar short plantar ligament short plantar because there is long plantar let me show you here so again uh, this is the uh, 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 cuboid and this is the calcaneus and here is the um, uh, uh, calcaneal tubercle so it's an attachment for the plantar calcaneo uh, cuboidal ligament or short plantar ligament the long uh, long plantar overlaps it. It's like this. Where is it? It is the long plantar one, right? And this is the short one, just uh, under it. Or you can say superior it because we are looking to the inferior surface of the foot. Okay. Um, back again, when you have a look to the lateral surface of cuboid yes we, we, you can see two protruded small protruded bones the first one known as peroneal tubercle or fibular trochlea as you wish and there is another one for uh, lateral collateral uh, ligament with the fibula so the fibular trochlea you know the tendons of fibularis longus and the previous fixed to buy a ligament, small ligament, to this fibular trochlea. You can call it again bironial uh, tubercle because you have bironial longus, bironial previs, or sometimes they call it fibular longus, fibular previs. So fibular, it's equal to bironial, right? Okay, so. Again, here is the uh, tendons of fibularis or peroneal uh, previs and longus. Longus will go there and attached here. So, and this is uh, fixed to the fibular trochlea here. And this is the four lateral collateral ligament. We'll talk about in the ankle joint. Back again to the calcaneus, but now we would like to have a look to the medial surface here there is a protruded projection. You can feel it, try to feel it, which is the known as sustentaculum tili, sustentaculum tili, that projected medially, this is number one, and it has a, a, a facet or articular surface for the talus, and under it, under it, there is a groove here. Where is that? Let me show you here. Again, this is a tentaculum tili, and this is because now you're looking to the inferior surface, right? So this is the groove in which uh, tendon for flexor hallucis, flexor hallucis longus uh, passes there, right? Somebody can say, okay, show it me. I will show you where is that. This is the, um, look, this is the calcaneus, right? I'm trying my best. So this is the sustentaculum tili. This is the medial 
uh, this is the medial malleolus you know that's medial you're looking to the to the uh, foot medially so this is sustain sustentaculum tali you can feel it by your finger just inferior to the uh, medial malleolus and you can uh, uh, find here the uh, uh, tendon of flexor hallucis uh, longus coming from there so there are also a couple of structures we will cover it when we talk about the foot. Okay. Okay, so Stintaculum, what else here? Uh, yes, I think lastly we have the superior surface. Look into the calcaneus from superiorly. Well, simply you have, art do you remember the um, articular surfaces on the uh, talus because you know this is the talus and this is calcaneus so there are a couple of there are three articular uh, surfaces uh, for talus right so you have anterior and posterior and of course you have the middle one which is on sustentaculum tali they consider it part from the medial side but it's okay at the end of the day you have three articular surfaces anterior middle and posterior um, tailor articular surfaces for the talus to articulate above uh, the uh, articulate with the calcaneus superiorly okay one still we have very important one thing here which is a kind of um, uh, 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 sulcus do you remember the um, neck of the talus this is the talus this is the head and this is the neck and there is here if you remember a small like uh, sulcus known as sulcus tali we mentioned that in the talus sulcus tali but also there is another um, uh, uh, sulcus which is related to the calcaneus known as calcaneal sulcus look at it here this is the calcaneal sulcus this is calcaneal sulcus so when the talus articulates with it so both creates a kind of a canal or sinus known as tarsal sinus this is the tarsal sinus made by calcaneal sulcus inferiorly and sulcus tali superiorly both they form the tarsal uh, tarsal uh, sinus now Tarsal sinus or sinus tarsi because sometimes is like uh, a tunnel again between talus and calcaneus and there is something called tarsal sinus uh, tarsal sinus let me check why it's not working okay uh, it's called tarsal uh, sinus syndrome in which you know that there is a couple of uh, there is a ligament here interosseous ligament that connects the uh, talus with um with tail us with uh, calcaneus plus vessels plus nerves so when you over use the foot for example repetitive standing or walking or in case there is an ankle sprain or trauma this canal can be narrowed and a pressure can be created on these structures creating a kind of a pain also people people with the flat foot they suffered from pain usually they feel just anterior and lower to the ankle joint this is the ankle joint for example yes it's located here so this is a calcaneal look this is an x-ray and you see the calcaneus in which there is a fracture here calcaneal fracture okay this is the talus um you know talus articulates with what with navicular bone calcaneus with the cuboid of course so uh 
is service anatomy it's good to have a look on it so look at here we'll remember that this is a kind of small superstity for the base of the uh, fifth meter tarsal bone you can feel it also so at least you know where you are you know we finished the uh, uh, Tails and we finish the calcaneus, which is uh, uh, bones related to the or parts from the proximal group of tarsal bones. Now we have just one intermediate tarsal bone known as navicular bone. This is a navicular bone like pouch shape, as I mentioned. Most importantly, to know that it's located on the medial side of the foot, medial side, so it's located medially. And you have to know that the cuboid laterally right so back to the navicular bone importantly also i would like to focus on the articulation of navicular bone posteriorly it articulates with the talus but anteriorly and i would say laterally it articulates with the distal group of tarsal bones including the the cuneiform bones medial intermediate and lateral plus sometimes with the cuboid bone so, this is the uh, navicular bone, location and articulation, and importantly, it has a tuberosity protruded medially. You can feel it also on your, on the middle side of your um, foot. I will show you. This navicular tuberosity for attachment of posterior tibial tendon, for the posterior tibial uh, tendon. Let me show you here. Yes, here is if you remember that sustentaculum uh, tail of calcaneus, you can feel it inferior to the median, median malleolus. Also, anterior to it, there is a navicular tuberosity. This is the navicular bone, and this is the navicular tuberosity. You can touch it, right? You can feel it. So, it's for attachment of posterior tibial tendon. Lastly, uh, about the tarsal bones, we have three cuneiform bones and laterally the cuboid. The cuboid articulates posteriorly with the calcaneus, as I mentioned. Medially, it articulates with the laterally cuneiform bone because you have medially cuneiform, intermediate cuneiform, and laterally cuneiform. The laterally cuneiform bone articulates with the cuboid and anteriorly the cuboid articulates with the lateral two metatarsals this is first metatarsal second third fourth and fifth metatarsal bone so each cuneiform bone articulates with the um, with one uh, metatarsal bone respectively and the cuboid articles with the last lateral two metatarsal, which is important to know. I like the arrangement because when you know the arrangement, you know this is medial, this is lateral, these articulates with the front and back, you understand what's going on, especially when you look to the x-ray. You can tell what's this bone and what's that. Okay, now look to the... Um, uh, a tendon for fibularis longus muscle which is which, that comes laterally uh, from here and passes in this groove here because you look to the inferior surface of the foot here so then it passes here until it reaches the uh, cuneiform the medial cuneiform and the pace of the first metatarsal Yeah, we mentioned that. Nothing to say about that. Now, lastly, guys, we have five metatarsal bones and 14 phalanges. The metatarsal bones are, of course, long bones with the phalanges as well. And they are numbered from medial to lateral. So you give the metatarsal bone number one to the... Uh, to that of to the meter tarsal of the big toe 
din. Number two, three, four in Latin, and five, which is literally. Uh, you notice that the first metatarsal bone is the largest one and it's located medially. Each metatarsal, if you look at it, it has base, shaft, head, base, shaft, head, or you can say proximal, shaft, and distal. It's up to you. Shifting to the uh, phalanges, you have 14. Um, for the, regarding the big two, you have two phalanges. This is the proximal one and distal one. Otherwise, each toe uh, has three phalanges. Proximal, middle, distal. Proximal, middle, distal and so forth right so uh, each phalanx also has base shaft uh, and head thank you